We are made in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, anything God can do, I can do, right? No, but not altogether wrong. I am not the God, but he has granted me the use of his power. There is only one principle, one power, one process, one God. It is only one, but I reflect to him what he is. Without me working in the world, he has his hands tied behind him, as it were. At this point, we are not considering Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but only the power of healing brought by them both. Healing can take many forms. They are spiritual, physical, emotional, and psychological healings, and they do not depend on either healer or the one being healed. Faith in God does not always absolutely depend upon the faith of the person being healed, or again, the faith of the healer. If this were the case, people with great faith in God would always be healed. I don't think this really happens all the time. Although it can, we observe at times that those with great faith are not visibly healed as they would hope and pray for even though they have believed and prayed and have given it to God. Some don't believe in healing, and yet they are healed. They may receive a healing through medicine or perhaps a miraculous event which they attribute to chance, but in either manner, they are healed. What then really comprises the healing process? I believe it is really a mystery that cannot be solved by mankind on this planet. I do not think that it can be logically dissected, but the results are evident when someone is healed. It is not only by prayer, nor is it only by faith or intention or circumstances alone that the healing takes place. It is a mysterious process, and the key word here is process. We can know what it is not, but it is much harder to say what it is. Is it only in the giving up to God in total abandonment and submission that no matter what is happening, only God is in charge? Yes. Is it not only believing that God is a loving Father who has only our good in mind, no matter what it looks like to us at the time? Yes. Is it not only in the collective unconscious of mankind and in the individual that the total abandonment to God gives a peace beyond all understanding that no matter what happens, God is in charge as that loving Father? Yes. Well then, there is nothing left for man to do in this world except give it all to God. This does not really solve the mystery, however. It is in depth of the unknowing where the depth of faith and union with God is revealed. This is the mysterious process. It is the unknowingness that cannot be known in this world and yet binds the soul to its maker. It is the trust without evidence, the faith that it is not seen. It is the unknown process which is visible and yet not visible to the eye and at times even hidden to the mind. The dependence upon God is not the only element in the healing process, in either the healer or the one being healed. What does make a difference in the process of healing is the inner peace, which results from the acceptance of God as a living Father. What may seem to be primary is the peace that affects both the healer and the one being healed. What is, just is, and God is all there is. How often we have said, let go and let God. Let the mysterious process be, and the good and peace will also exist. It may not be evident, but it will still exist. It will still be, and it will happen. We call this, perhaps, a curing process. It is unseen, but nevertheless, it will have its effects. These effects are acceptance, peace, and gratitude bestowed by the mystery of the process itself.